Doesn't matter, because let's start it and say hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm here with Zenrot. Oh. As always, I think uh, 20 episodes ago, you told me that you should I should stop saying that because you're the only other person that's ever on here <laughs> that's not. <laughs> that ever comes on, yeah. Uh, it's true, but you know, occasionally you're not on it. And also, we're getting close to episode 50 of To Be Released. That means if we combine it with Modcast, we will have been doing 100 of these then. Well, I have technically done 100, and then you've done close to 100, like 80. I gotta be at 90s. It's somewhere close to that. It's crazy to fucking think about um especially since we had to start all over again and then there was a good year of inactivity for about uh six months and then the big boy skill completely changed everything and here we are true it was it was a very official show for a while lots of, of information that was relevant we need to, uh, there's a part of me that really badly wants to do an episode where we just go back to the old Modcast and then we listen in and hear what we have to say about old Dogon and how we used to, that first episode I have to actually fix because that, I can't believe that anyone ever listened to Modcast 1 because literally you can only hear it out of your left eardrum. <laughs> it is so, oh it was so bad. <laughs> But yet, uh, a good number of people saw it and were like, yeah, go for it. And it was like, sweet. Next episode. I know they really support us when you can only hear it out of one ear and they're still there. Yeah. And then one of us um, barely wants to talk. It was a weird time. We we really need to go back. And unfortunately, Penta exists on some weird fucking Finland time, so we can never get him on. Yeah, he can never return. No, it's a shame. Uh, we definitely are missing a whole bunch of Penta in our lives in general, in terms of speaking and hearing Vegeta and other such things that he used to say. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Vegeta. That was a uh, Vegeta. That was a very good one. All right, let's get into the big boy scale, and that's enough reminiscing of the past. We'll do something about that later when we get closer to 50. But for now, let's talk about today's big boys, uh, who is two big? Who was technically two big boys and then one big gal, which are all in the umbrella of the big boy scale. Are all giant boys? Yeah. Can't get away from it. It's just the big boys. Exactly. It is Android seventeen and eighteen slash Android eighteen, and it is the first LR. That ha- Android sixteen is the slash. Shit. It is Android seventeen and eighteen slash Android sixteen. It is the first cover change mechanic for an LR, because in the grand tradition of um, Dokkan, the first two were free, and now here's the actual LR. Uh, let's see what they do real quick. They are the As and- is tradition. As is tradition. They're the Android's leads for four key, attack and defense 150%, and eight, uh, everything at 150%. Uh, their passive skill is key plus one, attack and defense 70%, medium chance to evade enemies' attacks, uh, including super attacks, and then when HP is 66% or percent or more, wait, when HP is, okay, that's what that, the the evade is, and then the Android's this category What allies. is my fucking Twitter timeline right now, for fuck's sake? What just happened? Toaster just retweeting raw-ass, like, full-on hentai into the timeline. Oh, well, Aminol is gone, so someone has to pick up the mantle there. Someone has to do it. (laughs) Just fucking do it. We can't just have nobody do it. Exactly. Someone has to do it. It may as well be Toast. It is the only enjoyment he gets out of life, so let him have it. (laughs) Now that he's in college. Thank God. This is like, ah, for fuck's sake. Okay, this is going to stop the Android thing for a bit. Isn't it fucking crazy that when we started Modcast, Toaster was still in high school? (laughs) Oh my god, that's true. <laughs> that's fucking really true. That is the craziest thing to think about. Now it just dawned on me. It was like when we fucking started, he was still in high school. <laughs> oh, how time flies. And now he's all grown up retweeting hentai as all eventual adults do. Class, it's like straight up raw dog bondage hentai with a demon. Like what? You know, I have to look. Um, am I going to be? Yes. Okay. I'm going to log into Twitter because no one else is around me. Uh, and I'm going to quickly look at this. If everyone wants to follow along, <laughs> yeah, follow, clear, clear out the room. Clear out the room. Follow Toaster of Fun. I'm not about to put this on the video because I just barely got. I can't start my channel again if this gets taken down. Uh, oh, no. Don't put it in the video. Just. No. I don't even want to encourage you to go look. It's just. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Let's see. Where is this demon? Okay, there, there's the nakedness. 
Okay. A lot of these are fake Grand Order characters, I think. No, that's not. That one's not. Did not know there was more than one. <laughs> there are multiple ones that I'm looking for. What is the one Okay, at least three out of five of the six of the ones I've seen are from Fake Grand Order. All right, I can't find the full-on raw dogging dicking, so we're going to have to move on from yeah, this. I'm going to have to send it to you because I can't suffer through this Wait, shit alone after we've gone this far now. into the bit. She's not a demon. Okay, that is another Fake Grand Order. Why did you send it to my Discord? Now I'm going to forever have Musashi getting <laughs> dicked down in my Discord. Every time we're going to go to record, this is going to be here, Zen. Did you not think that far fat that the fact that every time we have to come record, we're going to see this woman being dicked? Well, I can just turn it off for me because it's one of my messages. God damn it. It's just you that has to see it. <laughs> it's going to always be there, too. I can. <laughs> I have to get through the androids now. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try. Where the fuck was I with the androids before it got hard distracted? I'm gonna have to scroll up, dude. I can't. <laughs> I fucking can't right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, and oh, then God. they give androids category allies to keep forty percent attack. <laughs> And then their active skill is exchange, in which uh, after three turns, or if you're fighting a cell, no, it has to be three turns, have two Android category allies on the team, and then he can switch into Android 16. But also, if you're fighting cell, he can just do it on turn one. And then Android 16 himself, he can, once he's summoned, he can, he gets key plus six, attack and defense, 200%, high chance of performing a crit, and then... He had launches additional super attacks if there's an android slash cell saga category enemy. And then I want to say he disappears after a couple turns. I want to say it's only uh, three he, turns. He switches back to 17 and 18. Yeah, and you can only do it once. But when he's on the field, he's extremely um, stupid powerful. That's a good way of putting he's it. He's good. Yeah. So, and then he turns back and, yeah, like I said, 8, 17, and 18. So... Yeah, this is the this is the uh, this is the unit. This is the LR. How do you feel about them, Zen? I like them. I think they're pretty fun. Uh, I, I like the idea of sixteen walking out, and I like how in their um, uh, their their like super attack, their eighteen key one, like their their super strong one. Yeah. Uh, punch the guy, and then sixteen just puts his hand on the guy's shoulder and punches the shit out of him. It's very it's good. really good. It's very good. It's really it's funny because really he gives him a smile, too, right before he does it. He does. He gives him the little, like, hello, and then he punches the shit out of him. It's great. The active skill, by the way, has the cleanest audio of anything I've ever heard. It's like they heard all the feedback they got from this, uh, the fucking Super Saiyan 4, Goku, and Vegeta. They're like, all right, only one of these dudes are going to have extremely crisp audio, and it's going to be Android 16. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think the the animations for it, and this is also um, specifically for this unit. I think I think this specific mechanic, the cover mechanic, with the exception of of unfortunately Vegeta and Trunks, have been pretty. Like I like the idea of like a support in the one side, and then an actual attacker in the other one. So kind of depending on what you want for that specific battle, it's like well, these they switch back but eventually. Goku and Gohan weren't supposed to switch much either because having the Goku was more valuable than yeah, having the Gohan. It is. It's like one hundred percent. Like I don't understand why you would ever transform into Gohan, specifically because Goku is just so damn good because <laughs> he's a supporter. But for this one, it makes more sense to have like uh, he's only here for a bit. But when he's here, when he's on the field for the bit that he is, he does a lot of damage and then you can go back to your support person it's like a very interesting way to like how do you make uh dokkan has suffered about how do you make support units actually uh good in the sense of like yeah like support units are good because they boost the entire team the problem is is that most support units don't survive in the extremely hard content because they can only take like one punch and then you're halfway down your health (laughs) But with this one specifically, you can now, for three turns, like, if you're super into, like, uh, not super into, but if you get into that point where you actually need the switch and you don't need the support, then it's perfectly fine. So I like this idea. And I also like that I think uh, he counts for Android 16, even when he's in 17 and 18. Is that the way it works? Uh, no. That I don't know. Yeah, this this is... 
this is something that, that we're still trying to figure out. I know that Super Saiyan Goku slash Gohan, he still counts for a Super Saiyan Goku, but maybe he doesn't count as a Gohan until he actually is Gohan. So you actually have so to. So he still and... counts as a Goku after he switches out to Gohan? I thought he only counted as a Goku when he was in Goku form. Yeah, that's that's the thing I was trying to say, but I wasn't saying it very uh, well. I'm still distracted by the fact that I can't scroll down. So <laughs> my mind's not in the best place. <laughs> Uh, either way, I I like this mechanic and I like this LR. It's the, the basic summary of this. I think it's pretty cool. And also I like the Android 16 looking down. It's maybe the simplest art for that Dokkan's ever done for an LR, but it, lo- it works extremely good. I like Android 16 in general. He's just cool. Yeah, he is pretty cool. He's a, <clears throat> he's a nice man who's also a pacifist. He just wants to look at some birds, man. This is basically the year for... I like birds. Uh, 16 animations because the first animation we got with 16 is him punch robot punching someone into a wall and then ex- observing the birds and then we got this one that is also just amazing in all his art it's a good time to be a fan of android uh, 16 the only thing that doesn't uh that doesn't jive with me for these guys is that um the android portions mm-hmm animations are all from the future androids it's all stuff they do in the history of trunks yeah i guess they couldn't think i think isn't that the case of like all of android 16 and uh 16 17 and 18 is they've never been able to actually give them moves that they did specifically because they don't really fight together they only fight together in the history of trunks they never really fight together in the actual um manga slash yes, that's true in the, well in that's the not 100 because they one of their supers i think it's their 12 key um when they're 17 and 18 is technically from the right timeline is it whole group when they when vegeta fights 18 and gets his shit wrecked and then they fight everybody mm-hmm. that's what those animations are from but then the 18 key is when they kill gohan but with the inclusion of the uh, hello from Android 16, that's yeah. the only difference. He, he gets the hello punch, and then they do the kill Gohan blasts. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird. I guess it really is just because I guess most people recognize the um, the future, the future ones, the evilish ones, the ones that are actual murderers. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense, but still. Yeah, they could definitely keep it uh, canon. If they never did it in that timeline, then they shouldn't do it for their car it's only fair so yeah how do you how are you feeling about the big boy scale for these uh these lads um uh, i uh i i happen to go with a four and a half out of five yeah i think i'm also gonna go with four and a half out of five for me they're really uh they're very solid i really like them i really wish i was able to pull them i was not like goresh who got like four in the span of eight minutes so that wasn't my life or you. You were able to get, like, one on the second multi, weren't you? I got one on the first multi, and then I got another one on the third multi. Yeah, that's I did a... three. And both, I got two. Both of you are sipping on some hard bullshit juice with that LR bullying. <laughs> there you go. Four and, four, four and a half out of five on the big boy scale. Um, and now, before we actually get into questions, we're going to have to bring this up because... Uh, it was brought up, I want to say, in the last episode, because, of course, Dokkan announces this right when we go to record. Um, the update to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, specifically his animation, in which they should have just said oh, he walks Oh, that's right. Now. I already forgot about that, even though I use him every day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're, gonna, we're not putting him on the big boy scale, because I don't think he's even on the big boy scale. We're putting his animations on the big boy scale. Yeah. Um, so here's the one thing they really should have worded their whole thing better because when they said a full renewal everyone assumed that it was like oh so they're fixing the 12 key and then they're fixing his big key one so now it looks all like modern day ones that's not what they did all they did was yeah, they didn't the- they didn't advertise that properly because no. i was sitting there thinking oh they're just going to copy and paste the new gohan over top of it and they did even less than that no, all they did was actually give him a walk, and now it looks weird because it's that syndrome where if you buy something new for your kitchen, you want to upgrade everything else. So now the walk looks pretty good, in my opinion, but everything else just looks shittier by comparison. <laughs> yeah, so he, everything is exactly the same except for instead of the bounce, it's an actual walk. 
Yeah. So he has like, and the walk is smooth. Like it's clean and it looks good and it's not jarring or like janky looking. It looks like dog shit from like three years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they should have either just redone the whole thing or just copied the new Gohan and just given him that one. Yeah. Or at least promoted it better. Because when we heard, when they, and this may be why they left it at such a small footnote, but I think it would have been better if they had actually not announced that they were changing the 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 walk at all so then we just woke up i I think saying hey we're gonna totally update this changed the expectations a little bit you know yeah and it like all of a sudden we had things that we wanted where if they had just done it without saying anything everyone would have thought it was awesome exactly like we had you know different camera angles it's not just the art it's literally like the the way that super attacks are framed now is completely different from when they were when he was a brand new lr like um so it's it's something where like i like this walk now i like that he walks now but also you should have maybe done a little bit more because people still take that yeah fucking piccolo i think it's he's the funniest one that can take that kamehameha because he fucking does a kneel down and it looks like he's <laughs> fighting the kamehameha with a head with his head only <laughs> So, I don't know. I like the one, like, I like Cell because he stands there with his arms crossed and it just looks like he's standing there with his fucking arms crossed. That one's good. Uh, Vegito, when he takes it, is hilarious because his mouth is open, <laughs> doing his big dumbass smile. Where he's just like, ah, and he's taking it right in the face. So there you go. The, that's his walk animation. How you feeling for specifically his walk animation, not the unit uh, on the big boy scale? Okay, so wait. Are we doing just the walk or the whole animation? We'll do the whole animation because we just talked about the whole animation. So we'll do whole animation. Mm, three out of five. Yeah, I'll go with three out of five. It's not the worst LR um, super attack in the world. It is slightly better now, but it's still kind of jarring in a completely new way now. But good uh, on it's, them. It's, it went from and bad to like a different kind of awkward and bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a different kind oh. of renewal. I also like the idea of uh, Dokkan eventually fixing. That gives me hope for maybe some other units essays to actually get better and get fixed, but. Maybe they'll only treat it to LRs, or maybe Gohan was such a specific case because they've gotten so much shit about it. Because <laughs> Gohan was so specifically bad. Yeah, uh, it's so bad that when Legends did their fucking air walk, everyone shit on Dokkan. Yeah, that that shit was like monumentally bad. Like that was a whole new world of just fucking awful. Yeah, it's uh, it's hilarious. So there you go, there you go. Three out of five for the his animations, not his actual unit. Just his animations. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, not the unit. The units, yeah, you're right. I don't think the unit is even on there. You're right. So let's go into some questions. We're going to finally answer them. Uh, I'm looking on my Twitter, and let's answer the... I don't think we had it. I think the only one we got for YouTube was specifically about... Uh, you know what? Let me actually just fucking check. Let me do a quick check-in, because if I, if I accidentally fuck up and not include someone who left a question in the YouTube, I'll forever feel bad about it. So let me quickly. Oh just... yeah, that's right. You t- I don't. That's why I don't take questions on YouTube. It's not worth the risk. There you go. That's also <laughs> that's risky, also bro. why you don't do any too of risky. these on your channel anymore. <laughs> because we take too long. That's to also edit. true. Uh, just kidding. You have one in the pocket. People are going to be hype when you release that extremely old pitter patter be popping. That is actually an extremely good episode <laughs> that just never got released because I had internet I problems. I forgot about that again. That's my problem is that I'm always like, I'll edit it later. And then I don't. And I forget that it exists. And then you remind me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. By the way, still waiting on that uh, Pokemon <laughs> Soul Link for you to upload it on my channel. Oh, my God. That exists. <laughs> like, holy shit. It does. You, oh you, to- God, you totally. Like how we ever made those. <laughs> also, there's no questions on uh, the YouTube one. I've never forgot it. I always remember. And this is why our dynamic works is that I never forget it. You always forget. Okay, well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, the Nero episode is already edited. I'm just waiting to upload it till tomorrow because it's nice. a long upload. I knew you wouldn't forget Nero. <laughs> but I knew that was <laughs> that much was clear. All right, then. Enough bagging on each other. Let's get on to the actual questions now. Uh, 
First question comes in from at Yaoi Mom Maths, my sister. It says, "How do I stop this uh, puppy from biting me?" And it's a picture of our new dog, my uncle's new dog. Technically, we're taking care of it, so it's really our dog. That dog likes us better. Um, biting my sister, <laughs> and um, I forget what kind of dog is it. But it's a brand new puppy, but it's also bigger than our chihuahuas. So it's one of those kind of dogs. So Um, it's like a big dog? Oh, it's a big dog. If you've ever seen pictures of um, Uncle's dog, Cotton, it's the same kind of... The same dog that fucking broke into the house because it was raining outside. (laughs) So it busted its way in. Yeah. This is the puppy version and a girl version of it called Cookie. And she's currently biting my sister. And she says, how do I get it to stop? And I said, I don't... I don't know how you stop a puppy from biting you. Just hope that when it gets older, it doesn't try to eat you. Uh, if a puppy is biting you, you should get a toy and then uh, d- direct its attention to the toy. There you go. It's That's not biting the- you because it wants to bite you. It's biting you because it, it's biting anything nearby. So if you switch to a toy and wrestle it with a toy, it'll just switch its attention over. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't know. <laughs> it's true. And this, um, Well, based on how dumb Cotton is, this girl cookie does not stand a very good chance in the <laughs> intelligence department. Uh, but maybe if we can train her but there you go that's an actual legit answer to the question next thank you for the question next question comes in from Kaze NT who says who's your favorite Maverick from the X series uh, of course he means Mega Man X not the extreme uh, sports <laughs> sports uh, um, fucking championship thing the X series so what about you? Well, I'm currently playing for Mega Man X, so I'll just go for my first Mega Man X. I actually have not played anything past, I think, X1 in terms of the X series. So, um, X1 is my favorite one anyway. So Yeah. So I'll say Chill Penguin because he has the best what name. Chill Penguin too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really, I, like, penguin. I really like Chill Penguin. Everything about him seems pretty fucking awesome. Such a... St- Stupid fucking thing. Why would you make that? It is uh it is fantastic and I think Chill Penguin deserves honorary mention as the be- as the best Maverick as far as I'm concerned. It serves the design. And it's just so hard to hate on Chill Penguin, man. It's true. And then also he fights you by creating a little eye sculpture of himself and then throwing it at you. and then he doesn't throw it at you, he dives through it. Oh, chill pig. The whole fight. Plus, the fight's just fun. It's just like raw fun. It is fun, except for the fight. part where I just uh, content- continuously jumped up screen to fucking beat it. Uh, it is a really fun fight. Uh, okay, there you go. We're in agreement with this one. It's Chill Penguin. Chill Penguin when for Teppin. That's actually what I want. A lot of people want like the actual known characters like X or uh, Sigma. Nah. Chill Penguin, representing color black, because he's a villain and a penguin. Because <laughs> he's evil. And then we can get, like, a whole, like, oh, can you imagine a legendary Chill Penguin? So, <laughs> when he's summoned... He played the- all enemy units get halt for fucking 13 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and then also he summons two tiny ice sculptures on himself on the other opposing side of the board, <laughs> so you get two tiny chill penguins that are good enough for blocking one thing regardless if even if it has flying or something do it get to it teppin get to it uh next question comes in from uh zenrado hashtag read dr stone who asked where did 17 learn how to drive hey that's a valid question man it is a He's very been a robot for years what did he, when did he learn how to drive I like to think that Chiro at some point was like, well, this this robot boy should learn how to drive. He really needs to know how to drive. <laughs> so I'm just going to implant him with the idea of driving. Yeah, that makes sense, right? That sounds like something stupid Jiro would do. Yeah, Jiro is kind of a fucking idiot. So yeah, yeah. We'll Con- say yes. Yeah, considering... Didn't he, like, kidnap them as when they're, like, tiny children? That's what I thought. I thought they were, like, kids. Yeah, so they had to, like, I don't know, <laughs> there's a lot of fucked up ways of, I don't understand 100% how Jerome stole these kids and that nobody cared that they were gone. Yeah, and everyone was like, oh, okay, well, you know. Well, fuck Lapis and gone. Azul, All nobody right. cared about them anyway. I like to think, oh, man, there's something, like, 
uh, even though I know a lot of spinoffs sometimes from Dragon Ball can be kind of uh, hit or miss, I really want to see the thought process of Jiro as he tries to make a whole bunch of different androids. Specifically when he got to his weird racist period with uh, the androids, what is it, 13, 12, and Oh, 11? the, yeah, the 13, 14, and 15? Yeah. The, the not technic not technically race, I guess stereotype robots where it's like, yeah, this one's based off of a, a Native American and this one's based off of a black person and this one's a redneck and he also needs a trucker hat. I'm totally going to put the trucker hat on him. But then I also don't remember if that that was actually made by Jero or by Jero's braid in a jar or something. Um, that's a, I don't remember the lore of that movie. That's actually probably true. Yeah, the thing is, I remember that Jero put his, I think, his consciousness in a robot, and then he would, if anything happened to main Jero, he would then, I guess, not create androids, because the, the, the number scheming doesn't make sense for him to go from 16, 17, and 18 back down to 13, 14, and 15. That doesn't make any sense. So something like that, like something that specifically talks about the androids and then also talk about his failed experiments. Like if 13, 14 and 15 in his eyes were good enough to eventually use as a fallback plan. What were the fuck ups? What were the ones where he was just like, I don't know what I was thinking here, man. Uh, Didn't I'm just gonna... he make Android 8? Didn't he make Aider? Yeah, he did make Aider, but he's the eighth one. He also made that giant fucking redhead robot, I think, but I don't think he has an Android number. And redhead robot, you mean Android 16? Not that one. The other one. The one he fights in Dragon Ball in, in Muscle Tower. Uh, yeah, the fucking Arnold. Yeah, the Arnold robot, who does not have a Android number, but he did make Android 8. So that means, again, there's an Android 1, 2, 3, and all those other things. I think they could definitely do into it. And then also we can learn where 17 learned how to drive. We'll learn Android all 1 is uh, Aureli. Oh, don't. Don't try and fucking mess with this headcanon right here with the idea of that Jero created a really. Because then you're taking all the good work of the man, Dr. Slump. Even though I think that's not his name. <laughs> his name is not Dr. Slump. Uh, no. I'm forgetting his name. It's okay. They also mention in Dr. Slump how he's the main character that everyone forgets. So it's all good. Next question comes in from... Oh, thank you, Zenra, Zenra for the question. Name is Senbei Norimaki. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard name. And again, and I love Dr. Slump, and I cannot ever remember the man's name. It's very hard. Next question comes in from Nighthawk, who asked, Whatever happened to a Rayleigh watch? Also, I think we got to go back to the roots of To Be Released and pronounce the translated names of the cards from Japanese to English. Uh, thank you for the question, Nighthawk. The main problem with doing the second part is that it's actually super hard for me to ever... Sometimes DBZ Space doesn't work. And also, if depending on a hype unit comes out, DBZ Space goes down. Yeah, it just, like, fucking dest- gets destroyed. You can't do anything about it. Yeah, that's just the case of just, like, you know, shit like that happens. And I'm also not going to get on Renzi's case, because Renzi does this shit for free, and he doesn't need uh, more bullshit thrown at his plate. So it's just easier for me to go into the wiki and just, like, actually say what it's done. Especially now that we're doing a big boy scale style of thing where we have to actually... There was too many, like, specifically, like, Chi-Chi where we were like, I think this is how the passive works. Yeah, where we just, like... That was a good episode. Yeah, it was a very good episode. Um, But, yeah, that's why we do it that way. And also, in terms of a Rayleigh watch, a Rayleigh watch only happens when I think a Rayleigh might be coming to Dokkan. And now that we're in this weird period where it's nothing but, like, um, uh, Cell Saga stuff, it's just not any chance of a really anytime soon. I mean, eventually they're going to have to get to the fact that they can't easy a mass Saiyan before a uh, really because a really came first and she's a Dokkan Festival unit. Who deserves an easy a So they're going to have to deal with that first. When it happens, it'll happen. But trust me, when a really watch is ready to come back, I a really forgot watch she's here. a fucking Dokkan Fest. Yes, she is. She, You know what's fucked up? Her fight is the only Dokkan festival that you can currently use with keys. They always bring back every single Dokkan festival for like um, uh, for celebrations, but they never bring back a Rayleigh. So you can only fight a Rayleigh through keys. Sucks. Yep. It does. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. 
Uh, next question comes in from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who asked, which one do you prefer, Goku or Goku Black? Just recently got Goku, and this is another reference to his last week's episode. No, last week's episode. It wasn't a week ago. Last episode where he talked about that um, this specific fake girl was the Goku Black of fate, and then he was actually able to pull the five-star version, which is the Goku version. And I'll say I'm still going with the Goku Black version because under boob and easier to get. That's that's my combo. All right, I'll sign off on that. There you go, Goku Black. Under boob strong. is good. It's true. Very underrepresented, I feel in anime. For some reason, they always go with the over the top boob, but never actual under boob. I don't understand it. I don't understand Japanese design. <laughs> Not appropriate, uh, appropriate boobage. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying you need to spread it out more, man. You gotta come up with new ways to show ex- a new way to present something old, boobs specifically. <laughs> That's uh, fair. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Young at XV, who asks, "Do you think that Sigma looks like Buzz Lightyear?" I think he meant year, but he put gear instead of year. Uh, for the record, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, I want to say in the first Mega Man X thing, like, I said he kind of looks like Buzz Lightyear. Uh, so there you go. The answer is yes. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Kento, who says, what's up with you and your local Taco Bell? Um, you should watch uh, my Day in the Life of Wokey to understand more about my situation with Taco Bell. I don't want to bastardize my other, my other series, so you should go check those out. <laughs> Can't cannibalize. Exactly. Um, but I have a very weird relationship that's only gotten weirder. Um, so weird that after one specific incident when Zen was not available, I got the Mew Mew Force and I was like, I need someone to fucking complain to because this is fucked up, right? And they were like, why are you dealing with this Taco Bell? And the answer is, I don't really have a choice. I can't, a man can't only eat McDonald's every day. They made a documentary about that. (laughs) Maybe you should just food every day sorry say that again i feel like the internet maybe you should just not eat fast food every day so you don't have to pick between taco bell and mcdonald's if only the my situation was like that if only i had an actual fridge that could store our food that was not just snacks that we can hide inside the one room we have in the specific house we have someday we'll go back to normal and i can make a salads again I miss salads. You don't understand how fucked up it is. I used to eat salads, and now we can't <laughs> hold salads anymore. So I can't hold them anymore. No, I can't even. We can't even hold milk because to get to the milk, I have to get. To, if we were to get milk, first of all, we'd have to keep it in a fridge that is guarded by like seven or eight dogs, depending on the night. And then every time I go in there, um, all the dogs want to do is like look at me and then smell me and then also sometimes get in my way. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, I just want to open this fucking fridge and there's like all of you on me at the same time. Uh, It's tough out there, man. Life's tough. I hope that answered your question. (laughs) And next question comes in from Shade. And he asked, did you get your hug? And if so, did it help? Also to you and Zen if he's there along with anyone else. How do you avoid burnout in on content jobs and life in general? Shade asked this after I was specifically had an extremely bad day at work um, where I was doing basically the job of three people by myself. And also one of those jobs was being a supervisor. Another job was trying to work a printer that specifically always breaks the fuck down and doing a whole bunch of other things. Then actually doing my job on top of all that. So it was tough. And I never did get a hug, but mainly because I didn't feel like hugging people at that moment because my body was too tired (laughs) because of the bullshit I had to go through. That's fair. Yeah. But how do you avoid burnout and stuff? I don't – you try and do something – like I don't – burnout in jobs is weird because only when I actually get super crazy overworked do I ever feel burnout. But then I usually just take a break and I usually come back fine. Um, For making content, it ends up being a little bit more – it ends up being like a different story because it kind of depends on if the specific thing like for example um and this is absolute. this is why i'm always like fascinated by the dudes who are specifically like yeah this is a dokkan only channel 
it's like you can just play Dokkan nonstop for your channel and not feel like burnt out by the idea. Like even if I like something, if I only do that, I feel like it's like weird, right? Yeah, I, I hit those points where I'm like, what the fuck am I even supposed to do? Like, yeah. I'm like with Pitter Patter Pop, I'm at the point where I'm like, fuck, do I do right now? Like, I have nothing that I can do. Yeah, so it's like you try and figure out other ways to combat that. And I think uh, it's kind of tough for YouTube specifically, spe uh, just because YouTube specifically hurts you if you try and branch out. They only ever want you to do one specific thing ever. So it kind of makes um, trying to branch out and do something different. It It's a super risk, and it's always – that's probably why a lot of those people um, – for, like, a, a good example is that um, Rhyme likes pulling on uh, – pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh packs but he knows he can't put that on his main channel uh because it hurts his channel so he makes a side channel of it and he builds that up on his own and does stuff like that but he wants to do that because he likes and enjoys it but he can only really do it on a secondary channel he can't actually do it on his main channel because if it does then it actually hurts him overall and then like i'm thinking like thinking about that stuff it's like man that sounds like it really sucks to have that be your actual main income <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's not like he doesn't make good money, so he's probably doing okay. <laughs> yeah, obviously, Rhyme is doing extremely fine. <laughs> Don't make this be, be like, uh, not to make it seem like, oh my god, woe is Rhyme. Everyone go out there and hit subscribe and like for Rhyme style stuff. Actually, you should do that, actually, if you haven't done it. Go ahead yeah, you and probably support, should. support the man. Do probably all should. the good stuff. But I don't know, it's tough. Uh, for content specific, that's probably why some people like do Twitch stuff and then they make their Twitch something completely different from like what they do on their main YouTube channel. Cause Twitch doesn't actually, I think, uh, all Twitch cares about is that you do a shit ton of hours and you keep doing it consistently. So as long as people uh, are, Twitch is all about like just fucking constantly grinding. Exactly. So if you're into that, that's where you can probably get away with like trying to do something different as long as it's like something you're consistently doing. But burnout also exists there. And there's no easy way to like actually like avoid burnout unless you specifically, I guess, live like the Joker and every day is different. But then that also sounds like it's a crazy mess to hold on to. So I don't know. The answer is there's no real good way to stop burnout. But the best thing you can do is try and do things a little bit differently and then hope that burnout doesn't happen. Much, oh. Yeah. And they'll also don't try and the main problem is always that you overexert yourself and then you end up being like well, fuck, I'm, uh, the reason I'm so burnt out is because I, like, dedicated myself to 50 hours of doing this, and then I finally got it out there, and now I just feel, like, burnt out in the entire process in general. And that's because you didn't take any yeah. breaks, you didn't try and, and do anything like that. It's tough because, like, like, oh, I'm gonna do the job, and then the job is done, and then I can stop. It's, it's, you're doing the job, and then you're on to the next job, like, over and over, you know? Like, you can't, you can't record something and then say, okay, cool, I'm done now. <laughs> yeah. I have finished the thing. You gotta keep it going. And so, yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. So there you go. That's our, at least our thoughts on it. And I don't know, I don't think I've ever felt... I think life burnout is just kind of depression, right? That's when you actually get the... Um... I, I think everybody gets overwhelmed from time to time. Like Yeah. The yeah. work kicks up and home life gets busy at the same time and you just you feel like you're stuck mm. having to just fucking relax you know yeah that's true i think one time um this might actually show my specific naivete of a lot of things but uh many years ago i talked to jace and this was around the time where i didn't have a job or i didn't have anything but I, I usually talked with the Mew Mew Forest and specifically Jace about stuff because we were working on some other stuff in the background that we hope one day will get completed. We're still working on it. Um, but I would talk to him and I was like, uh, he always told me like, specifically one day, I guess it was after I was talking to him. He's like, hey, you have to make sure that, by the way, you, that you're not you're not depressed, right? And I'm like, I don't know. How can I tell if I'm depressed or not? He's like, is there ever a time? Because like, he specifically has dealt with depression before. He's like, has there ever been a time where you've been on your bed and you don't feel like getting up, even though you're not tired or anything? 
and I had to think about it. I was like, I don't think I felt I'd like, there, there was a point where I was like, oh, maybe I felt that way at one point, but I actually can't remember. But he's like, okay, then you need to be careful. Cause it's the point where you like, you feel tired, even though you've just woke up. That's the point where you should know that the reason you're feeling that way, because it's basically your depressed about your current situation and you should get some help from that and he was like specifically like say like i don't know if you've ever felt depressed but if you start feeling that way i think you should seek help and i was like all right i'll keep an eye on that because i had honestly had not been thinking about that stuff at all like the idea of just like my job search and everything else whether or not it was actually hurting me and i was like okay well let me quickly find a job so that i don't feel i guess i don't feel that way because if I start feeling that way, it's because I'm not changing my specific life routine because it's literally just doing the same thing. It's waking up and then not doing anything and then going back to bed. So there you go. Life. That was very serious. So let's, of life. <laughs> yeah. That's very serious. So let's go on to a non-serious question from my brother, Admiral Nux, who says, what do you think about him? I'm not going to link you this uh, picture. It's a perfectly fine picture. It's just a boy with a what I feel like is a gun on the back, and he's an anime boy, so he looks very precious. I can't link this to you in Discord because it's going to return me to the picture, so I'm not going to show this to I, you. I, tr- I typed more things to see if I could get it to auto-scroll because I wanted to see your reaction where all of a sudden you could see it again. But alas, it didn't happen. No, wait. Well, now I need to see what messages you got. Does this auto-scroll fuck? I guess it doesn't rip the bit. God damn you. <laughs> god damn it it would have been funny if it did happen though uh air fighter says this looks like a very strong boy and i'll agree with him he looks like a very strong boy i can't show this as an and he knows why so <laughs> next question <laughs> next question comes in from bolnerat who asked what do you see in a guy like dr eggman i see a handsome devious god um, I see, when I see in Dr. Eggman, I see a man with a master plan and that's about it. He is the Eggman. Teddy though. Roosevelt. That too. Fuck. I keep forgetting that Eggman was based on Teddy Roosevelt. Yep. Don't uh, know why, but that's who they went with. It's like when you learn that, um, Dr. Wiley and Dr. Light were based off of, um, Thomas Edison and fuck. Who was the other guy? Not Thomas Edison. It was based off of, like, the guy who made... Who was the dude who... I cannot believe I'm forgetting his name. Albert Einstein. There you go. I forgot who Albert (laughs) Einstein was. And I want to say Albert Einstein was based off of Wiley. And then the reason is, is that because... um, I, I, I read this a long time ago, so if I get some specifics of it wrong, then forgive me. But I believe the idea was is that the reason that uh, the villain, Dr. Wiley, was based off of Albert Einstein was because they viewed – the person who designed it viewed Albert Einstein as a villain because he was responsible for the creation of the atomic bomb. It's fair. That's, that that's is, reasonable. That is fair. And that was the first time where I was like – Oh, yeah, I guess if I was in that situation, I could see why this guy would be bad in my eyes for helping create something. Yeah, that, no, I think that that makes sense, I think. That, you know, that's fair. That's extremely fair. So there you go. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Zen's Bodyguard, who asks, can you read Vinland Saga, please? I don't know. I think I have to go out of my way to actually read that one, <laughs> meaning I can't just use a Shonen Jump app, so that makes it automatically harder for me. <laughs> it's not all the Shonen Jump app. No, it's unfortunate. To be fair, a lot of Shonen Jump uh, series are also not on the Shonen Jump app. Add fucking Yu Yu Hakusho to assholes. Are you going to have Hunter x Hunter but not have Yu Yu Hakusho and also not have all of Hunter x Hunter either? They don't even have... They have... If you try to read Demon Slayer on it, they give you half of it up to like midway and then there's a giant empty chunk of missing chapters and then it just starts up again yeah um this is this is maybe the this shows you this is the true struggle of someone who tries to read a manga on the shonen jump app that is not super popular um jujutsu kaizen specifically 
when uh, it started getting translated around, I want to say, chapter 36, the people who were specifically translating it, meaning that it was unofficial translations, basically said, we're giving up. There's too much mumbo jumbo in this fucking manga to translate. <laughs> so they <laughs> so they gave up around chapter 36. And then thankfully, Shonen Jump app started picking it up. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to actually get to read the chapters that aren't translated. Nope. They are not translated, and it starts, it goes from chapter, I want to say, 1 to 7, and then it goes, jumps to 44. So there's a whole chapter of, like, Jujutsu Kaisen that I'm missing because, one, nobody wants to translate those pages at all, so I just don't know what happened. <laughs> and so, so not even, like, fan groups are translating it? No, the, the fan groups gave up. They were just like, there's too much fucking to <laughs> translate in this, fuck this. They said, I think, I, I wish there was, I remembered exactly what I said, but I wanted to say there was like too much weird terminology that was too hard to translate. So they were just giving up and they were just like, we're not, we're not translating this anymore. And it was like, hey, shit, dude. Yeah. I was like, fuck. It's not for you, but it's funny for me. It is. And uh, Jujutsu is pretty fun. And that, that's why I was like, fuck, that sucks. Jujutsu has maybe one of the greatest, um, drop kicks in manga history because a boy jumps i want to say two feet into the air and the j- drop kicks from a building into another building and hits a demon square in the fucking face <laughs> it's so good it's so good that the person witnessing the drop kick is like where the fuck did he come from and then i was reading it going where the fuck did he come from pretty hard to hate <laughs> yeah it's pretty good that's pretty good uh so there you go maybe someday vinland saga but we'll see that's my that's my answer maybe someday uh next question comes in from matt and says do you respect women like zenetsu and this is a chapter i guess a panel from the specific um uh demon slayer where zenetsu was talking about there are two boobs two buttocks and two thighs with each woman and they smell good and every pass by so i look for our forward to even lay my eyes on them uh zenetsu, i'll do you <laughs> i mean i do in theory kind of agree with zenetsu the problem is, is that it's zenetsu so i don't want to agree yeah. with him. so here's okay so you've actually read demon slayer correct You've caught yeah. up on it as someone who has not and has only really I'm experienced it. caught up, yes. Someone who's basically only at this time just the anime for now. I, one day I plan to go read through the manga and everything. I do not understand if you're actually supposed to like Sinetsu. And then it also baffled me to learn that in the manga he is the second most popular character. I don't. I what <laughs> what's going on? Are you actually supposed to like like him? Because I thought the whole point of him was like, if you're anim- you, you, yes, you will start to like him more. Okay, and this is also coming from I have a friend who I talk with Demon Slayer who's caught up in Demon Slayer, and he still really hates Zenetsu as well. And I've actually asked one other person, and she has also said he gets better. So I don't know what's up, but currently my feeling is is that he's fucking trash, and he also realizes that he's trash. So he's trash that occasionally does a lightning <laughs> he, bolt. He does some cool stuff. He he, you have to like it's hard to explain because mm. like I, I I can't really do it very well without spoilers. But there's a lot that goes into why he is the way he is. Okay, I'll look into it. I got, obviously I'll read the manga. Uh, as soon as I have time for it, of course, because I ain't about to fucking wait uh, an entire year for UFO table to actually animate something that they may or may not be animating because they do that bullshit response of like, it's up to the fans, which means to me, this shit's about to be passed off to someone else, isn't it? And this is why you're saying it this way. Yeah. Fucking Toei is about to buy that shit. And fuck everybody over. I was like, God damn it. Don't you dare one punch man me. Don't you do this. <laughs> but um, yeah. There you go. I mean, I respect women. Big rip to One Punch Man, by the way. Oh, man, it's so... One Punch Man has some of the greatest... And this is another thing that I was, like, surprised that even the anime was able to do justice to that art. So the artist who also does um, One Punch Man is also the artist who does the manga version, which everyone likes and everything. Uh, Not the web... Yes. He's also the guy who was responsible for the drawings in Ice Shield 21. And... uh, 
And that was actually one of the problems that stopped me from being able to see Ice Shield 21 as much as I love Ice Shield 21, is that the art in Ice Shield 21 is fantastic, but if the anime does not reach up to the quality of the manga, then what's the point of actually trying to see it, right? It's like, it's in my eyes of like, if you're not going to be able to do it full justice, then there's no reason for me to actually see the anime in question. So, One Punch Man was able to escape that by actually having really killer animation that actually did enough justice to the manga where I felt all right. And then season two happened. (laughs) So it's like, maybe it's just, maybe it's just too hard for some people. And I never actually got to see, some people said that eventually later episodes were well, well animated, but it was not worth putting up with the fact that it's not that way throughout at all. It's basically the Dragon Ball Super Syndrome where every other couple episodes are extremely well animated. And then sometimes it's not. Oh, and sometimes it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Exactly. And for One Punch Man that is all about those fights, I don't think that it's it's a it's a bummer. What happened to One Punch Man was a bummer. Yeah, One Punch Man got really fucked over. Yeah. Damn shame. Alright. Next question comes from Air Fighter. We're close to the end here, so we're getting through it. Next question comes in from Air Fighter who says Thoughts on Global taking Tech Broly off the banner for no reason. So I don't. I know you don't know this then because you don't follow uh, Global in Japan. But in Japan, the Tech Broly is in the Androids uh, banner. And in Global, for some reason, he is not. They just decided that uh, Global shouldn't get Tech Broly so easily. Oh. <laughs> that sucks. That does suck. I don't understand why they did that. Like, I... Um... I don't know. That just fucking sucks. There's sometimes I feel like some of their actions in global are justified from the matter of like, okay, they're a little bit far behind. So they just want to try and do something different. You know, the situation sucks, but it is what it is. Like for example, a unit not being on the banner because he's not out yet. Like there's no helping that. Right. Um, like I want to say tr- is trunks and Zamasu out in English. No, they're not. So therefore they weren't in the banner for, um, Go- were they in Gohan and Cell? They had to be, right? They were they're- for Japan. I don't know if they were in Global. So they couldn't have been for Global because they're not out in Global yet. Um, if you want to correct me on this, feel free in the comments. I'll read them, but I won't acknowledge them because I can't always be right all the time. <laughs> but the idea is Fair. that's that's something where I understand why they're off of it. it. That's not a shafting in my eyes. It's just because Global's in the background. This specifically where we both have Tech Broly... And it's a banner where all LRs are included. I don't understand why Tech Broly's not on that banner. <laughs> that, that that makes no sense to me. And it's not like such a big a slight where it's like, um, for example, like it's funny. Like sometimes, obviously, I take uh, pleasure in the pain of global. Um, not all the time, but sometimes when it's really funny, it's funny. Like with Super Saiyan Three Vegeta, when that old meme showed up in the background. There's nothing funny <laughs> about them taking off Tech Broly other than that. Other than the idea oh, of Oh, are you talking play- about when they photoshopped Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta over the better character? Yes, that amazing. <laughs> the, oh, that, funny. That's oh peak. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's peak hilariousness in terms of, like, global fuck-ups. This is more just like, I don't understand why you did that. <laughs> this is very stupid for you to do, and it's not funny because they didn't, like, replace Tech Broly's art with Super Saiyan for 3 Vegeta or something. So there you go. It sucks. I'm sorry, Global. Next question comes. That's a big douche move. Yeah. Next question comes in from Gordon Ward, who says, "Why are there so many songs about rainbow, rainbows, and what's on the other side?" Um. Well, some people think they're illusions, and some people think they're visions. But I don't remember the rest of the rainbow connection. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a great song, though. Have you ever seen the Muppets movies, Zen? I can't say that I have. You should check out the Muppets movie. It's fantastic. It's a fantastic musical with featuring... It's basically a road trip movie with Fozzie and uh, Kermit the Frog. Uh, They have a great song together. And then obviously Rainbow Connection is a fantastic ending song. It is basically the summation of just like... um, If you're trying to do something, then don't stop doing what you're doing because one day the the world is built on the idea that dreamers are together and that they're through their hard work that they can achieve basically what their dreams and make them into reality and stuff like that. It's a fantastic movie about from like specifically Jim Henson and his idea of just like uh, 
just because you're in a specific like um genre of something that doesn't mean that you have to stop being a creator and that you can't elevate the specific thing you're in regardless of like naysayers and everything else in basically never stop dreaming and do all that good stuff and it's wonderful beautiful music movie that uh if you have not seen that we should totally do a concession stand on (laughs) because i had no idea that you had never (laughs) seen the muppets movie and it's a very it's a funny movie too it's a it's a really funny movie um and that's where this man is quoting right now. So there you go. The The answer to this is that one day we're just going to get together and watch the Muppets movie. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. Mm-hmm. And the last question, and this is an important question. It says, do you prefer the, bo- the term booty or butt cheeks? Hmm. Um, that'd be booty, right? Uh, I kind of prefer, I, you know, as an insult, calling something booty or butt cheeks, I've always preferred saying ass blasted, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, that means a different thing. That doesn't mean the same thing. I guess not. <laughs> In terms of butt-related stuff, I like saying ass blasted. Um, <laughs> but yeah, booty. I think booty is better because booty can be both positive and negative. I've never seen someone do a positive butt cheeks. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen anyone say, "Yo, that's butt cheeks, bro." <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. I just don't think it happens. No, there's just no positive way of saying um, uh, butt cheeks. So we're gonna go with booty. Also, the new day was able to get uh, millions of dollars through the use of the word booty. They would not have been able to do so with the term butt cheeks. It's fair. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's. Uh, God, God damn it! Why are you ch- why now? I, I have a fucking a bunch like three people telling me to scroll down. Why are you like this, Zen? Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, that's the end of two be released. We're ending it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's double funny because I think the bit that you call was <laughs> move. Boom. God damn it! <laughs> I think that's right. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's right. All right, and my sister's here now too. So let's have my sister say the classic phrase. Can you say, um, don't play Dokkan because if you do, you go to hell before you die? Uh, don't play Dokkan because if you do, you go to hell before you die. Say that's, that's no good. That's no good. I, that's my part. There that's you go. You did. Oh, and that's no good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>